Okay, guys, let's take a look at this. I saw uh, an interesting discussion on Twitter yesterday about down and away fastballs versus using the fastball up, and I wanted to um, I wanted to comment on that because there were a lot of really interesting questions and a lot of interesting comments. But let's look at the facts first. Okay, this is fastball use through 8-2016, so it was a couple of weeks ago. This is where Major League Fastball, uh, how it's used. If you picture a lefty hitter, this is the up and in box from a catcher's view. And it's also the up and in box if this is a righty hitter uh, from the pitcher's view. So, so this box is up and in to both hitters. Okay, So that's how that works. Uh, once again, 13% usage in this up and in strike zone part of the, of the, of the zone. Um, down and away is 19% instead of the typical 21, but it, it fluctuates, depends on how it is. Probably at the end of the year, it'll end up at about 21, but that this in general is how Major League pitchers use their fastball. 3% middle up, 3% middle down, 4% middle in. 10%, 5%, 12%. Remember those numbers. Um, we'll look at how the faster fastballs get, get used also. And it's, it's eerily almost exactly the same. But let's, look, let's get to the numbers at hand. This, the discussion was about the top shelf versus the bottom shelf. And if we include the pressure zone, which is, are, the, are the numbers just outside the, the strike zone, then it, it becomes pretty glaringly obvious. If we look at the batting averages outside the zone at the bottom, 232, 256, 209. Uh, maybe 232 would be like an average down there. Versus every one of them in the 100s, 167, 136, and 154 up above the zone. At the In the strike zone itself, 354, 293, and 327. Versus everything in the mid uh, to slightly high 200s. 283, 246, 262. So there's no there's no comparison in batting average. Let's look at some of the other stuff. Um, home runs 155 down and away box versus 141 in the up and in box. Chase rate 16 percent, almost double that up and in. 26 percent chase rate at the bottom with the 256 batting average. 42% chase rate with a 136 batting average. Somebody brought up the UCLA one pitch or one zone um, with their fastball up. I think that's a Trevor Bauer handed that down to UCLA. But this is the reason. In every study, virtually, of every fastball study that you look at, the highest chase rate is, is middle up. And the reason that it's middle up is because it looks like the best pitch to hit. It looks like a middle fastball that's a little higher than, than the norm. So it's going to have the highest chase rate a, a, a really high percentage of the time when you look at fastball studies. And it has the highest chase rate, yet Major League Baseball chooses to use it the least amount of any other zone box. Why is that? Because they're afraid of it. I, why? I'm not sure. 136 batting average and the highest chase rate, yet we're going to use it the least amount. Um, it, it just doesn't make any sense when you look at this as a whole. Now, I get it. Major League Baseball has sabermetric people looking at it from a thousand different ways. Some of those ways are brilliant. Some of those ways um, is kind of a forest and trees thing. This is the forest. This is when you look at a, a, a study like this, it's really gross. And that means that you're clumping a lot of things into just one basic, being able to say one basic thing. But the one basic thing was what the discussion was. Production at the bottom of the zone is much higher than production at the top of the zone. So why would you continually pound the bottom of the zone when it's absolutely getting killed? 354 is high, is almost as high, that's virtually identical to the middle middle box it is just literally much 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 higher at the bottom of the zone the production 
when guys throw 97 plus in that same time frame you have again remember 10 5 and 12 exactly the same misses exactly the same 3% we have 1% um, more in the up and in strike area but we have the same 19% down and away so you're using even though you throw 97 you're using it exactly the same way as got the guys that are throwing at 89 to 94 95 the the bulk of it the average major league fastball is 92.9 .9 miles an hour so 93 is the average but yet the way we use it is at about 89 ev and this 97 being used down and away is about 91 so you work your butt off to throw 97 but yet we're going to use it in an area where it's losing speed and we'll get to the other part of that too this is another thing that was asked what happens um, on pitches that are at the bottom of the zone what part of the reason why they're being hit harder is because it's easier to get extended that's hundred percent correct it's much easier to get extended because the hands tend to go where the ball goes wherever you perceive the ball to be your hands try to go to that level and so when the ball's down your hands try to go down and they and your arm gets extended and that is why if you've ever tested anybody which sabermetric people have not when you actually physically test hitters you find that the highest exit speed always happens at the bottom of the zone so almost to a person every every time I've ever done a live exit speed test which is massive amounts the highest one is typically going to be from middle to down in the strike zone because it's easier to get extended from middle to down to, to hit this pitch up here you have to on purpose flatten out your swing plane and raise your sights and your hands you don't hit these pitches by accident you hit these pitches by accident hard all the time that's why this number is higher significantly higher than the middle box the middle down box is higher than the middle middle box so if you throw 97 you're better off throwing it middle middle than you are throwing it down and down in middle and it, it's that that to me is a, a really astounding number but yet the sabermetric people will not look at it like that they'll they'll figure out a way to 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 convince you that the down and away area is much better but it's not it it just simply is not the only th argument possible is the fact that there's 10 27 homers up and in, up and in and there's 28 homers down and away so the homers are fairly close most studies they're fairly close if there's a nod one way or the other it tends to go to down and away the Cubs in 2015 for example hit about 80 homers down and away to about 50 it just depends on the team and, and how you look at this but in general that that particular number is just about even down and away and up and in the homers are about the same but that it's not happening by accident up here it happens by accident all the time down and away so let's look at the let's at the last part of this this is all pitches and as you might have guessed they're all located down and away curveball down and away change up down and away slider down and away fastball down and away that's the basic area that's the epicenter for every pitch so major league baseball as a whole and that's a sabermetric thought process is let's throw every pitch down and away because over the long haul we're gonna get more ground balls that way I think that's the primary thought process there are probably other reasonings behind it I don't know them but let's look at the at just the nuts and bolts of this the fastball from the righty is gonna look like that the slider is gonna look like that the curveball is gonna look like that the changeup is gonna have a hump over that fastball if it's in that strike zone so every pitch let's throw them all in the same location that makes perfect sense right because major league hitters are geared to middle away we know that we've heard a million guys say look away get your foot down early let the ball get deep so we're gonna throw every single pitch in exactly the same spot in general and so from my perspective that is about the worst possible thing that could be done is to throw them all in the same location but let's make it worse let's make them easier to recognize 
by throwing them all from a different path. Let's throw them all to the same location. And let's do one more thing. Let's take that 92.9 mile an hour fastball and let's not add to that by throwing it in this up and in area. Let's take away from that and let's make it an 89 mile an hour fastball. So now my average 83, 84, 85 mile an hour slider up to 87, let's say that the average is going to be somewhere around 84 EV. So we're going to throw 89, 84. Change up about the same, 83, 84. So we've got about a four or five mile an hour differential between those two pitches. As opposed to taking that uh, 92.9, and throwing it up here where it's where it's 99 in the up and in box and now we've got a 15 mile an hour differential between fastball and slider plus it's harder to identify because if we throw that pitch up and in now the slider hides and it's got a bigger speed differential so does the change up so does the curveball in the dirt now it hides and so the chase rate goes up dramatically on that curveball. But instead, no, let's throw them all in this away area. And by doing that, you have, you have taken away deception because none of them, it's physically impossible to throw the ball all of those speeds in that location and have them look alike. It's physically impossible. So you, you are guaranteeing that your deception is going to go down. There's no question about that. Um, guys brought up the fact that you have to throw 94, 95, 97 plus in order to have it be to work up here and the answer is no that's not what you have to do um, you, we've all seen guys like Hendricks throw the fastball at the top part of the strike zone let's take a little riff here somewhere in the middle fastball up at 89, 90 fastball up at 89.90, fastball up, and the reason why it works is because he just knows how to keep the attention in an area that's lower. You cannot, cannot throw every pitch in the down and away area and have deception. He doesn't do that. He does locate his fastball away, but he also throws a slider off of that, a change up off of that. Um, there's some flaws behind that, but that's that's a whole nother story. In general, however, the the questions that were brought up in the Twitter discussion are all valid. But to answer a couple of them, no, you don't have to throw hard. In fact, it's more important if you throw soft that you have to elevate fastballs. You don't have to throw them in the strike zone a ton. You can throw them outside the strike zone and get chase chases like guys that are that are doing it right are doing this is not every pitcher doesn't have a three percent rate up there in fact Danny Duffy when he struck out 16 against right-handed batters he lived up here and here and threw zero zero fastballs down and away against right-handed batters that night and struck out 16 why because the fastball is getting faster the deception is getting higher. He can hide his changeup off of this, off the plate, and guys chase it. He can hide his slider down, and guys chase it. And that's exactly what happened. And that's exactly what good pitchers are doing. But Major League Baseball is throwing fastballs, curveballs, changeups, and sliders all down and away. So as a whole, as a forest the Major League Baseball is EV inefficient. And that's the reason why homers are up 25% in the last two years. It's that simple.